I left Madame Volpe's house in a state of painful excitement. Where would I find a diamond that large? All my family's money could not buy a diamond like that, and even if I had enough money, I knew that such diamonds are very difficult to find. When I came home, I saw a light in Simon's window. I climbed the stairs to his apartment and went in without knocking. Simon's back was toward me as he bent over a lamp. He looked as if he were carefully studying a small object in his hands. As soon as he heard me enter, he put the object in his pocket. His face became red, and he seemed very nervous. What are you looking at? I asked. Simon didn't answer me. Instead, he laughed nervously and told me to sit down. I couldn't wait to tell him my news. Simon, I have just come from Madame Volpe's. She gave me some important information that will help me find the perfect lens. If only I could find a diamond that weighs 140 carats. My words seemed to change Simon into a wild animal. He rushed to a small table and grabbed a long, thin knife. No, he shouted. You won't get my treasure. I'll die before I give it to you. My dear Simon, I said, I don't know what you are talking about. I went to Madame Volpe's to ask her for help with a scientific problem. She told me I needed an enormous diamond. You could not possibly own a diamond that large. If you did... You would be very rich, and you wouldn't be living here. He stared at me for a second, and then he laughed and apologized. Simon, I suggested, let us drink some wine and forget all this. I have two bottles downstairs in my apartment. What do you think? I like your idea, he said. I brought the wine to his apartment, and we began to drink. By the time we had finished the first bottle, Simon was very sleepy and very drunk. I felt as calm as ever, for I believed that I knew Simon's secret.